there are four diseases that occur due to trinucleotide repeats that are extremely high yield for the USMLE. And I'll be showing you how you will never, ever, ever forget them again. Like this video for my confidence for even saying that, but let's go. So we'll be talking about Huntington's disease, myotonic dystrophy, fragile X syndrome, and Friedrich's ataxia. But now we're going to zoom in on the first three diseases. That's because they have some high yield similarities so that you can remember them better. So Huntington's disease, myotonic dystrophy, and fragile X syndrome all have a dominant inheritance pattern. Fragile X syndrome has an X-linked dominant inheritance pattern, while the others have an autosomal dominant pattern. This is extremely high yield to note, and it's so much easier to remember that I group them like this. So just take a good look at this slide and let's move on. Another high yield similarity between Huntington's disease, myotonic dystrophy, and fragile X syndrome is that their trinucleotide repeats all start with C and end with G. So you might be wondering if they all start with C and end with G, then how can we distinguish them? Well, let's get into some high yield memory associations and mnemonics right now. So here we see an intersection between the words myotonic dystrophy and C something G, right? So look at that nice blinking question mark. What letter is missing there? That's right, the fourth letter in both myotonic and dystrophy, which is the letter T. So that means that the trinucleotide repeat in myotonic dystrophy is C, T, G. Boom, bam, bop, bada bop, boom, pow. Guys, if you haven't powered up the like button as yet, be sure to do that now. Click that like button, click it right now. Okay, thank you. So back to what we were saying. Then we have fragile X syndrome. So here we have another intersection between fragile X syndrome and the trinucleotide repeat. And again, what letter is missing there? Exactly, the letter G. So the trinucleotide repeat for fragile X syndrome is C, G, G. And next up, we have Huntington's disease. So there's no intersection of the words here, but don't freak out. Look at this. Because we can use the word associations between hunt and cage. So here we see a big blinking question mark again. So what's missing there? Assuming that we all can spell. And that is the letter A. So we have cage and highlighted here is a trinucleotide repeat for Huntington's disease, which is C-A-G. Another high yield thing to know is that cage has four letters and those four letters can let us know that chromosome four is usually affected. So just remember Huntington's hunt, cage. So that lets us know two high yield facts about Huntington's disease. One, the trinucleotide repeat is C-A-G. And two, the word cage has four letters. Four letters, chromosome four. And there are some other high yield clinical findings that we must know. And we can remember this with the mnemonic caged with two Ds. C, choriform movements and caudate atrophy. A, aggression, acetylcholine decreased. And G, GABA decreased. E, ex vacuo hydrocephalus. The first D, dopamine increase. 
autosomal dominant, and the last D, dementia and depression. So this mnemonic is basically breaking down the clinical findings that you can see. So these patients can present with coriform movement, aggression, dementia, depression, or even psychosis. The other letters are letting us know the lab findings that can be found. So how I can remember these features is that Huntington's disease is autosomal dominant. So that's a huge D right there. And then there is dopamine increase. And that's because the Ds are dominant. So dopamine would be increased and they are autosomal dominant. A very high thing to know is anticipation. Anticipation refers to an increase in severity and a decrease in age of onset in successive generations. So let's say a father is diagnosed with Huntington's disease at age 65. That means that his children will get Huntington's disease at an earlier age than 65 and their symptoms will be more severe. Anticipation is extremely high yield, so just remember it and know the caged mnemonic. But let's take another look at the clinical findings of Huntington's disease. So the symptoms include aggression, psychosis, dementia, depression, and coriform movements. The findings, there is an increase of dopamine because remember, the Ds are dominant. So dopamine is increased. However, there is a decrease of ACH, GABA, and caudate. And of course, Huntington's disease is autosomal dominant and these patients experience anticipation. So let's look at these images. Which one is normal and which one shows a patient with Huntington's disease? Is it image A or is it image B? Hmm, let's find out. So image A was Huntington's disease and image B was normal. This is another high yield fact. So neuroimaging of patients with Huntington's disease finds atrophy of the caudate nuclei, which results in an enlargement of the frontal horns of the lateral ventricles. But let's take a closer look. So these arrows are pointing to the caudate nuclei. That's our normal findings on imaging. And another way that people remember this is by using the trinucleotide repeats again from CAGE. So the CAG, we can also say caudate atrophy GABA. So that's reminding us that there is atrophy of the caudate nuclei in patients with Huntington's disease and that the GABA is decreased. Remember that basically Everything is decreased apart from the big D, which is dopamine, which is dominant. So it is increased. However, in this image, the green arrows are showing that there is an enlargement of the lateral ventricles due to this atrophy of the caudate nuclei. So we're done with Huntington's disease. Now let's take a look at Fragile X syndrome. So the X in Fragile X syndrome lets you know that it is an X-linked dominant disorder. And remember that intersection that we did before? That gives us CGG. So we can use the GG to remember that these patients have a clinical finding of giant gonads. So patients with Fragile X syndrome have large everything. They have giant gonads, like we said before, or macroorganism, large ears, a large jaw, and a long face. And here we have a picture depicting these findings. And now we're moving on to myotonic dystrophy. So remember the intersecting words with myotonic dystrophy and the C and the G, which made it T. <laughs> So the trinucleotide repeat in myotonic dystrophy is CTG. 
and we can remember the clinical findings of myotonic dystrophy using CTG. C, cataracts. T, testicular atrophy. G, gamma globulinemia or hypo gamma globulinemia. Another high yield thing to know, and we're kind of using the H in the myotonic dystrophy here to remember it, and that is hair loss. So patients with myotonic dystrophy have or can have frontal balding. For whatever reason, this is extremely high yield to know. So look at it, memorize it, and let's go. So CTG can also be used to remember another key clinical finding. So C, can't, T, terminate, and G, grip. So that's can't terminate grip. So if a patient with myotonic dystrophy shakes someone's hand, like we see here, it's hard for them to stop holding on. And it's not only with handshakes, it's for anything that requires you to like grip onto something, like opening a door or doing pull-ups, like this is very high yield. So remember, CTG can't terminate grip. CTG, cataracts, testicular atrophy, and hypo gamma globulinemia. So we talked about Huntington's, we talked about fragile X, and we talked about myotonic dystrophy. Now let's move on to Friedrich's ataxia. We can remember the clinical features of this with friends, but with no N really. So the F stands for foot deformity or frequent falls. The R stands for recessive, which relates to the inheritance pattern as it is an autosomal recessive disorder. I, iron accumulation in the mitochondria. E, for the eyes, because these patients can have nystagmus. D, for diabetes mellitus. And S, for scoliosis. Now let's take a closer look at the foot deformity seen in Frederick's ataxia. And this is pest cavus. So that is where there is an extremely high arch of the feet as you can see here. Another key finding are hammer toes. And it's kind of like what the name says because they do look like little hammers, but they're toes. So hammer toes. And now for the trinucleotide repeat for Friedrich's ataxia. And this is GAA. So how I remember this is that if you have the G, right? And you kind of just flip it upside down, it looks like a nine. So that lets you know that for Friedrich's ataxia, chromosome nine is affected. And the ah is kind of like a scream, which obviously I can't do for some reason. And here is a picture of a scream, so you can remember it a bit better. So you have the upside down G, which is a 9 for chromosome 9 defects, and that meant screaming for the two A's. It is extremely high yield to know that the most common cause of death in patients with Friedrich's ataxia is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. This is extremely high yield. Now let's summarize everything that we have learned. So remember that Huntington's disease, fragile X syndrome, and myotonic dystrophy, they all have a dominant inheritance pattern. However, for fragile X syndrome, the X lets you know that it is X-linked dominant. For all those three diseases, they also have trinucleotide repeats that start with C and end with G. We can remember the trinucleotide repeats for Huntington's disease using CAGE, so C-A-G. For fragile X, when we did our little intersection there, 
the missing answer was G, so that is C, G, G. And the same concept for my tonic dystrophy. The fourth letter in those words is T, so they have C, T, G, trinucleotide repeats. So just like that, we did a massive review of the trinucleotide repeats and the inheritance patterns for three of four of these disorders. Now let's take a closer look at their clinical findings. For Huntington's disease, this can be remembered with caged, with two Ds. And that's basically telling us what clinical findings can be there, such as the coriform movements, the caudate atrophy, aggression, ACH decrease, GABA decrease, ex vacuo hydrocephalus, dopamine increase because it's dominant, it's autosomal dominant. And they can also have dementia, depression, and even psychosis. And for fragile X syndrome, the CGG, we use the GG to remember giant gonads. So they have giant everything, giant ears, giant jaw, and a long face. For myotonic dystrophy, we can use CTG to remember can't terminate grip. So holding doors, a handshake, doing a pull-up, they just can't let go. Or another CTG for cataracts, testicular atrophy, and hypogammaglobulinemia. And it's very high yield to note that they have frontal balding. And last but not least, Friedrich's ataxia. And this is GAA. But remember, we flip the G so it looks like a 9. So that lets us know that chromosome 9 is affected and the ah for a scream. And the inheritance pattern is autosomal recessive. And we can remember this with friends, but not really because there's no N. And that stands for F, foot deformity, frequent falls, R, recessive, autosomal recessive, I, iron accumulation in the mitochondria, E for eyes, they have nystagmus, D for diabetes mellitus, and S for scoliosis and a staggering gait. And that brings us to the end of our very, very high yield step two CK review. If you liked this content, please power of the like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell. And as always, to continue learning more, click this video right here. Click it. Okay, thank you.